So, um, hello everyone, my name is Justin Houston, and today I'm going to walk you through a problem for our, um, my Transport 2 class. Um, so this is homework uh, number two, and you can see here we have a, another capillary system here, which is a cross-sectional, um, and on one side we have uh, H2O, which is from the zero centimeter to the five centimeter mark, and then we have deuterium on the right side from the five to the 10 centimeter mark. Um, and some givens in this uh, problem, we know that the molecular weight of deuterium is 20 grams per mole, and we know that the density for deuterium is 1,110 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, we also know just by definition um, that the uh, molecular weight for water is 18.02 grams per mole, and we also know that the molar diffusion flux for water is 2.78 moles per meter squared per second. And so we're going to apply this to our first part of the problem, which is asking us what is the overall um, mass flux corresponding to the maximum molar diffusion flux. And so we're going to start off by um, defining the equation up here, which is the total molar flux. Um, and we know that the total molar flux is going to be equal to all of its subcomponents, which is the molar flux of water plus the molar flux of deuterium. And so we know that this is equal to zero, but you may ask why. Um, so when we, you can see here we have a divider in this capillary, and when you remove that, you have equimolar counter diffusion coming because these two components are going to be um, going counter to each other which is going to be canceling each other out. We kind of explained this um, in our previous homework. Um, and it's the fact that when you got two components going against each other, um, it's forming a homogeneous mixture over time, um, which eventually gets rid of all gradients and mole fractions become equal. Um, this all leads to the fact that the molar flux, the total molar flux is equal to zero. Um, so since we know this, um, we can then take and derive this equation. We can say that then the molar flux of water is equal to the um, negative molar flux of deuterium, um, which we can um, just ignore this part here on the right. I'm going to come back to that. Um, so we have this established. We want to move down here to equation 20 or 1-20 uh, in our book, and that's stating that the molar flux of component I is equal to the molar diffusion flux of component I plus the mole fraction of I times the total molar flux. And since we just um, stated that the total molar flux is equal to zero, we can get rid of the second part of this equation, which leaves us with the um, molar flux of component I being equal to the molar diffusion flux of component I. So since we know this, we can then apply that to our two components, um, stating that here on the right side, um, I know it's kind of hard to see, my lighting is not the greatest, but um, the molar flux of water is equal to the molar diffusion flux of water, and that applies as well to deuterium. Um, and since, as I stated before here in the given, we know that the molar diffusion flux of water is equal to 2.78 moles per meter per sec meter squared per second, which we can then apply to the equation we just derived, and we can then state that the molar flux of water is going to be equal to 2.78 moles per meter squared per second as well. Um, and since we know that we have to then find the um, molar flux of deuterium, we have solved that the sum of deuterium and water molar fluxes have to equal zero. We then know that the molar, um, molar flux for deuterium is going to be equal to negative 2.78. So now that we have that solved, um, we know that our question is asking for the overall mass flux, so we want everything in terms of mass. So we are going to convert here, I'm um, sorry, pencil's in the way, hand's in the way. Um, we are going to convert to the mass flux for each component, so starting with water. Um, we can convert this by taking the molar flux of water and multiplying that by the molecular weight of water. So, we get that. We get 2.78 moles per meter squared per second times the molecular weight, which is 18.02 grams per mole. And that leaves us with um, 50.1 grams per meter squared per second. So we are going to then do the same thing for deuterium. Uh, negative 2.78 moles per meter squared per second, which is the molar flux of deuterium, times 
20 grams per mole, which is a molecular weight, which gives us negative 55.6 um, grams per meter squared per second. So to get the total um, mass flux here uh, given by this equation, same thing as the total molar flux, it's just an um, addition of the subcomponents. So the molar flux, or the mass flux, excuse me, of water plus the mass flux of deuterium um, is going to give us the total mass flux. So we have here um, the addition of the two, 50.1 minus 55.6 grams per meter squared per second, which gives us negative 5.5 grams per meter squared per second. Um, but we are just going to do a quick conversion, converting from grams to kilograms. So we simply just divide um, our negative 5.5 by 1,000 to get to kilograms, which gives us negative 5.5 times 10 to the negative third kilograms per meter squared per second which is our overall mass flux that we are looking for, which answers the question, what is the overall mass flux, corresponding to the maximum molar diffusion flux. For the second part for this um, homework problem, um, we are finding the order of magnitude, um, which is an estimation for the maximum driving force at times equal to 0.1 seconds. Um, to start this off, we are going to use equation 1-27 from our textbook which states that the driving force of component I is equal to the sum from J is equal to 1 to N, um, which is the sum of uh, the mass fraction of component I times molar diffusion flux of component I minus the mass fraction of I times um, the molar diffusion flux of component I. And excuse me, this first part is the molar diffusion flux of component J. Um, so there's a difference between these two molar diffusion fluxes based off component I or J. I just mixed those up, so excuse me. Um, and that is all over the total molar concentration C times the Stefan Maxwell diffusivity coefficient, um, which is of component I and J. So what we're going to do is apply our two components here. Um, and we can say that component 1 is equal to um, water in this scenario, and that component 2 would be um, deuterium. So we're going to take the driving force of component 1, which is equal to the driving force component 1, all over direction Z, which is equal to mass fraction of component 1 times the molar diffusion flux of component 1 minus um, the same exact thing, which is the mass fraction of component 1 times the molar diffusion flux of component 1, all over the molar concentration C times the Maxwell-Stefan uh, uh, diffusivity uh, coefficient of component 1 and 1 um, and then we are then adding um, with the same equation um, the mass fraction of component 1 times the molar diffusion um, molar diffusivity um, flux yeah excuse me molar diffusion molar diffusive flux of component 2 minus the mass fraction of component 2 times the molar diffusive flux uh, component 1 all over the molar concentration times that maxwell stefan diffusivity um, coefficient of components 1 and 2 this time. Um, we can then simplify this because you can see here the numerator would cancel each other out for the first half of this uh, addition, which would make this whole pro um, part go to 0, which then leaves us with this last half, um, which I stated before. And so as you can see, we just carry that down. Um, and what we're going to want to do is get that all in terms of either x1 and x2 and j2 or j1. Um, and so what I did was got it all in terms of x1 and j1. And you can see here on the right, um, since we know that the um, total molar uh, diffusive flux is going to be equal to zero, um, which we can just des uh, describe, which we described in our first homework. And I uh, previously explained it as well for the first half uh, first part of this um, homework problem, um, and that is the fact that when you open up this barrier in the capillary system, you're going to have that um, equimolar counter uh, diffusion going on, which um, is going to um, allow us to know that this, that is equal to zero. Um, and so you can rewrite it saying that negative J1 is equal to J2. Um, and then with mass fractions, we know that the sum of those has to equal 1. Um, so we can say one is um, that x1 and x2 is, or mass fraction of x1 or mass fraction of one and mass fraction of two is equal to one. 
and we can then um, rearrange that to say that uh, mass fraction of 2 is equal to 1 minus the mass fraction of x1, and which we can then plug in um, to our equation here. And you can see that gives us x1, or the mass fraction of 1, times the negative molar diffusion flux of 1 minus, in parentheses, 1 minus the mass fraction of 1 times molar diffusion flux of 1 all over the total molar concentration um, times the Stefan Maxwell coefficient. Um, we can then, excuse me, there's a little bug on my whiteboard. <laughs> um, so anyways, we can simplify this even further. We can say that the driving force of component 1 here is equal to uh, negative uh, molar diffusion flux of component 1 all over the molar concentration C times that Stefan Maxwell uh, coefficient. Um, so this is going to be our final answer, but we're going to skip that for now. Um, what we need to find is this concentration value. So we find here, I'm finding the concentration of water, which is equal to the density of water all over the molecular weight of water. Um, plugging in those values, um, I established what the molecular weight was before. Um, but this time it's in terms of kilograms per mole, not grams per mole. Um, and then just a known value um, that we should just know by now is the density of water, which is 1,000 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. Um, dividing those two, you get uh, 55,555 moles per meter cubed, which can be converted to 55.6 uh, moles per liter, which is simply just the um, correlation that there's 1,000 liters per one meter cubed. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing for deuterium, uh, the density over the molecular weight. Um, and we have already had these values given to us. Um, that total is equal to 55,500 moles per meter cubed. Um, that conversion, once again, is 55.5 moles per liter. Um, which then leads us to um, having the averages of those two. We can then plug in to our equation here. Um, we already know the molar diffusion flux for component 1, which is 2.78. We divide that by that concentration value we just established, which is 55,527.5 times the um, Stefan Maxwell um, coefficient, which is a um, pre-established number, which is just, uh, 1 times 10 to the ninth, negative ninth, excuse me. Um, in solving this equation, we get negative 5.007 times 10 to the 4th, um, which then leads us to know that the order of magnitude that we are looking for is 10 to the 4th. Okay, so this is part 3 for our homework um, set of problems. Um, and what we are doing here is showing for these different um, numerical values where each of the components of the capillary are at for different time frames. Um, and I apologize for the poor quality in advance. I will read out all the access labels that are relevant um, and what we are measuring at that time and at the different time points. Um, so what you can probably somewhat make out is that the darker um, pen color on the graphs is representing water, whereas the lighter is deuterium. Um, so what we're going to start with is the mass concentration values here. Um, and starting with this first graph on the left, at, which is equal to time of uh, 0 0.1 seconds, you're going to see that from the 0 to 5 centimeter mark here, you're, um, the only thing reading is going to be the water levels um, at a level of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, whereas from 5 centimeters to 10 centimeters, you're going to have complete, completely filled with deuterium, um, which is at that 11, 10 kilogram per meter cubed. Um, moving to the second stage, um, the in intermediate stage of 60 seconds, you're going to start to have a little bit of diffusion within the capillary. Um, so you're going to see both components um, on for just a little bit on each of the other um, relative sides. So you can see here that um, a little bit of the water here is on the right half from 5 to 10 centimeters. And the same thing applies to the deuterium. You're going to see a little bit on the left half from 0 to 5 centimeters, all due to that counter um, diffusion uh, going on, the equimolar counter diffusion. Um, and then for the final stage here on the right graph, um, which is equal to time is equal to infinity, um, you're going to have completely, uh, complete balance um, because things will settle, settle out. You're going to have that homogeneous mixture. Um, 
and it's going to form that, like I said, yes, the homogeneous mixture. Um, so for H2O, for water, um, I have it listed at the uh, plateauing at the 1,000 uh, kilograms per meter cube for the, um, throughout the entire capillary. And then for deuterium, it's going to be at that 1110 value um, for the whole capillary as well. Um, moving on to the next row here, this is molar concentration values. Um, from the zero to five centimeter mark, that's going to be completely filled with um, water again, in which I left up previously from um, the second half, which I calculated the molar concentration to be 55.6 moles per liter. Um, and for deuterium, it's 55.5 moles per liter. So I have the 55.6 represented from 0 to 5 centimeters at that initial time for water, which then uh, transfer, um, transfers to um, from 5 centimeters to 10 centimeters, that 55.5 moles per liter of deuterium. Um, once again, moving to the intermediate stage here, at T is equal to zero, uh, 60 seconds, you're going to have that diffusion going on initially, uh, just a minor bit, but you're going to see that um, that both of them are, are starting to get into um, the other halves. So that's why you have that little bit of um, deuterium on the water half for the uh, molar concentration as well as for water on the deuterium half um, for its molar concentration as well. Um, and then moving to the final stage um, at T is equal to infinity. They are going to be leveling out at each of their own respective um, molar concentration values, which will be uniform throughout that whole capillary system. Um, the third row here is molar diffusion flux of water and deuterium. Um, and as you can see here, um, which was given to us and what we also saw for in part one, is that um, that those molar fluxes are, or molar diffusive fluxes are going to be equal to that 2.78 mark for water here, which you can see at that five centimeter mark, um, which is going to be the same as, or the the um, opposite of that for the negative 2.78 is going to be seen here for that deuterium um, for the T is equal to 0 0.1, um, and then we move to the intermediate stage at 60 seconds when the diffusion starts happening. Um, it's going to start spreading out a little bit there, um, which gives us the less um, steepness for that slope for each one. Um, still almost reaching that 2.78 mark there at the, um, at the 5 centimeter mark, but it's getting stretched out more across the rest of the capillary, which is once again why it's not as steep compared to this first initial um, time frame. Um, and then once we get to T is equal to infinity, once that homogeneous mixture has occurred and there's equilibrium within the capillary, um, there's going to be zero diffusion flux, um, molar diffusion flux, excuse me, um, which is once again, I've explained this multiple times, we know that's equal to zero because of the fact that there's that equilibrium, um, the uh, equimolar counter diffusion going on, um, and those are all cancel each other out due to no more gradients, um, molar fractions going to zero, or equaling each other, excuse me. So that all leads to us knowing that that um, molar diffusive flux is equal to zero there for T is equal to infinity. And that is at any point because of its uh, being a closed system as well. Um, finally, we have um, the mass flux. Um, and you can see here, um, it starts off um, at the zero mark, uh, zero kilograms per meter squared per second. Um, and once it reaches that five centimeter mark in position, which is the halfway mark of the capillary, it is reaching what we calculated in the very first part of this um, homework problem. Um, and that is that um, it is going to be reaching that negative 5.5 times 10 to the negative third kilograms per meter squared per second. Um, and then, so that is for uh, T is equal to 0 0.1 second. Um, when we move to the intermediate stage here at 60 seconds, um, you're going to have that diffusion going on, 
which is going to once again flatten it out a little bit um, and make it less steep which is why we don't have that peak and it's not reaching that same um, mass flux as it would with the t is equal to 0 0.1 uh, second and then finally we reach the final stage at t is equal to infinity um, it's going to be uh, equal to zero all the way across for that same exact reason that you're at that equilibrium um, and that everything is homogeneous and that there is uh, then leads us to know as we had solved before that the mass flux the total mass flux excuse me is going to be equal to zero so um, that's the explanation for our graphs I'm going to try to see if I can get this into a better frame real quick maybe not just so you can possibly see this better those are my total graphs I'm, it's still hard to read the um, axes but um, at least gives you a better idea of what I actually drew for all the graphs um, so thank you for watching this and until next time